glasses that I keep purchasing. Anyway, so we're gonna show you some more Sunglass Spot originals that I have, and then we will move on to glasses that I've attained either through various websites that are not sunglassspot.com or they were a gift from someone. So anyway, we're gonna start with one of my favorite pairs <laughs> that gets noticed every time. Netflix. 
protect me from the sun. The only issue I found is that the space in between here is so big, like for my face. I mean, it fits well enough, but like over time, especially if I'm sweating, it'll This design is as cute as it is. It's very impractical um, for someone who touches their face a lot because these droplets will hit you in the face and they will make you itch like crazy when you wear them. So these are purely a fashion statement. They're really only meant for like hanging out with friends or taking photos, like doing a photo shoot. They're not really for like practical purposes. <laughs> I paid like I think 10 or 15 dollars for them which is more than what I would normally pay for a pair of sunglasses um, oh there's like a little sticky paper on it hello um, anyway these have been really popular online lately and all of the little knockoff sunglasses websites um, including sunglassspot.com offer these in different various colors I almost got blue but I really liked the gray ones and I love rain. Rain is like my favorite, favorite, favorite type of weather. I love rain. The only thing I hate about rain is how stupid people get when they try to drive in the rain, but I love the rain. I think it's gorgeous and very relaxing and soothing, so. <sighs> don't get all tangled up easily, which I enjoy. I'm very happy that they don't do that because I thought maybe the chains would get all bunched up and gross, but they really are spaced perfectly so that they don't do that. Um, and they're not too long, which is, I mean, they're still a little bit too long, but it, like I said, it's only like a fashion statement. It's not really a practical sort of thing. Um, it's the same with those like little sunglasses that are like shaped into flames and they only fit on the edge of your nose. It's not meant to be for your protection. It's just a statement. <laughs> light like white gold kind of look on it although I did accidentally drop them a while back and they have a little crack in the front but I don't know if you can really see it on this camera probably not anyway these are some of my favorite glasses to wear so I try to keep I try to keep them safe because I don't I got them from a random website from Instagram and that company like doesn't exist anymore so I just safe because there's I don't have any other pairs like that <laughs> this pair I got from Amazon it's got plastic shields and metal metal frames it's got that cool texture I've had these for years 
and every time I wear them, I get complimented. People love these glasses. They love them, love them, love them. They're very, they're pretty snug on my head, but it means they usually stay in one place even if I'm sweating, which is a consistent issue that I have with sunglasses where they always slide to the end of my nose and pinch me. So these ones stay like right here. They're like right here pinned. But it gives everything like a beautiful pink, a sort of sunset-y kind of hue if you want to look. You see? You see how pretty that is? It's like really dark pink up here and then it gets lighter and lighter and lighter as you look up or look down, I mean. Yeah. So cute. I started collecting sunglasses when I was to say I was like 13 or 14 it was definitely like when I was trying to figure out like what my thing was you know because in the early millennium everybody had to have a thing like you could you could be like I'm so random and you have like chaotic energy and like crazy wild bedhead and like you wear like scraps for clothing and no one understands your aesthetic and like you mismatch patterns and that's your thing and then there's other people that are like oh I'm like really smart so <laughs> I'm gonna like school you all and like become the valedictorian and that was a person and then it was like you know oh I'm gay and that was like their whole thing in high school because like someone had to do it someone had to be the example you know, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and then there were people who played hacky sack all day, and, you know, so, like, I was trying to figure out what my thing was in high school, in junior high, even junior high, I was a bookworm fully, I lived in the library, I knew all the teachers, and they just let me hang out in there, because I could not deal with people, I couldn't deal with the, the kids my age, I didn't want to talk to them about really anything, because I just didn't, I barely remember the conversations that I had in, in junior high, to be honest, although I do remember this one time, uh, let's see, it was a science class, science class, and it was, uh, it was a day I felt like being a little snarky, but it was in the worst and dumbest way that I did it, so I get to my science class, right, and I see a backpack that's in the place that I normally sat, and here's the thing, you don't own your classroom, okay, you don't own your seat, unless your name tag is there all year long. You don't own where you sit. Don't get comfortable sitting in the same space every single day. It's not yours. We are creatures of habit. But when it comes to a public space, you need to be chill. You gotta let go of the idea that there's a space that's yours like every single day. It's not possible. You can't. But I was being a jerk. I was 14. I took the kid's backpack and I threw it on the ground. I slid it on top of the table onto the ground and these tables were kind of high. But you know what? He was trash to my friend in high school when they dated, so you know what? He deserved it. He was mad, though, because, like, it was before he met my friend, and, like, he was, you know, a 13-year-old kid. He's like, what the hell? He got so mad. He's like, there's a laptop in there. Crazy? And I was like, oh, well, I didn't know that. Why would you bring a laptop to school? What's the point? Why would you bring a laptop to junior high? Who, what are you trying to prove? You don't, we don't have computer classes. This is, this is the millennium. It's 2003. I don't know what you thought. Why'd you bring a laptop to a public school? You're gonna get jumped. Like, <laughs> I'm like, what are you doing? And that's not even like, it's just the truth. Like if you looked like you had money, like sometimes the other kids that didn't would take it from you because they need to eat and stuff. So I don't know why he was bringing a laptop to school. Anyway, that's one thing I vividly remember. I also remember in that same class, I had a classmate who told me that her first language was actually Spanish because she was um, she was mostly taken care of during the day by her nanny, who spoke fluent Spanish, of course, and uh, taught her everything she knew. And I thought that that was really cool that she was an American who was raised to know Spanish first before she learned English when she went to school. I think that's awesome. If you know more than one language, I think that's amazing. And I am jealous and I know that there's still time to learn a new language if I want. But languages are hard, first of all, and they're all so beautiful, and I love them all so much for different reasons. I wish, like, it's been my my wish since I was a little girl, like, if I ever got to meet a genie and I ever got to, like, have three wishes in the whole wide world, I, like, my first wish would be to be able to speak and understand fluently every language of the, that the human can speak. 
because I would love to be able to go anywhere in the world and talk to anybody that I ever met and like make them feel like they're at home and they're comfortable with me because I know their language. Like the, the look of sincere relief on someone's face when you can kind of understand them when they're kind of talking in their language and kind of talking in English. It's really sweet, first of all, but when I've seen the look on someone's face when they realize that there's another American who knows how to talk to them in a different language, baby, there's no other moment like it. It's awesome. It's such a good feeling to know when someone else knows how to talk to you when you're somewhere that you don't really fully understand yet. So I think that that's really cool. Okay, and then another pair. I got these on Amazon too. Um, I was trying to experiment with different colored glasses at one point to see if maybe I just needed to wear a different color every day depending on how my eyes felt because they were just so sensitive and getting migraines all the time. But these are way too heavy. So if you have a sensitive sinus uh, cavity here, don't get these glasses. They're way too heavy. They're too thick. See? They're like, they're like hella, hella thick. Super, super thick plastic. But the color is gorgeous through. It's like a beautiful pink. Everything turns rose, which is awesome. Um, I had these with me when I went on tour with my uh, first band that I was ever in. We went to Germany for like almost a month and I brought these with me um, because I kept getting sick on the tour bus as we were driving everywhere and sometimes we would drive through the night while everybody slept and I couldn't sleep because, well, insomnia and motion sickness. So, and so I would sit up front with the bus driver and just kind of talk to him about his life and about why he became a bus driver and all that crap. And then I would wear these to just self-soothe and like look out the window and see like an easy looking color of pink rather than like the bright sun and everything, you know? So. But eventually these would get too heavy for me and I'd have to put them away because they're such thick, 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 thick plastic, and they're very heavy on my on my nose, so I don't wear them super often, unless I get, um, if I get real, like, greened out, like, ganjaed out, then I'll go and put these on. <laughs> they make me happy. Everybody used to, um, when I was on tour, everybody in the band would make fun of me, and, like, if I had these on, they'd be like, whoop. <laughs> Birdie's a little stony. And I mean, I was pretty heavily medicated through most of that uh, endeavor. I love performance, don't get me wrong, but my anxiety is so crippling sometimes. I just, I was like, there were so many moments where I almost like lost my entire mind just because I missed, I missed Papa Bear. I missed being in my own bed. I missed my home. And on top of it, the AC was broken in our bus, but not broken as in off, broken as in it was on all the time and it was like it's 60 degrees the whole time it was like a refrigerator sleeping in that bed thankfully my sleeping bag retained a lot of heat but even that made me uncomfortable so I always had to keep like part of my leg out and my foot would get frozen and I'd put it back under the sleeping bag to kind of cool my body temperature down it was all a mess anyway um, so we've got a couple more pairs here that I'll share with co-worker. Um, Papa Bear has a work wife and and she's amazing. She's such a, a hardcore like awesome woman and like such a baller and like is raising three kids and like just kicks ass at life. I love Nikki so much. She's so awesome. Um, and her partner runs a YouTube channel that I would highly recommend you go check out. It's called Bay Area Taco Review. And he goes around to different areas in the Bay Area and he tries out their, I believe it's carnitas tacos, if I'm not wrong. Sometimes he'll try the chicken, uh, but most of it he try, he goes to every place to try their carnitas because that's like his favorite and I love carnitas too. So I'm always looking for recommendations on great, um, on great taquerias and Mexican food in general because I just I love it. I love the rice. I love the beans. I love the radishes. I love the, the, um, Tostadas and the flautas and the um oh my gosh, there's so many to 
collectible wonderful things that Thackeray is make that I love. Sopa. Mm. I love, love good, good home cooked food. That's what it always feels like when I go into like a taqueria or like any kind of uh, Mexican restaurant. Any kind of uh, Latinx food, Hispanic food. Um, it's just delicious and it always tastes like it was made with love. Unless I go to like a super corporate one, then it doesn't. <laughs> so yeah, these are some of my favorites. They're like a full on shield, like a full mirror and they make me look so important. I love it. Apparently she found these like at like a Rite Aid or a gas station or something. It was like, mm, Birdie needs those. And she was right. So the last pair I'm gonna show you of my sunglasses is my purple pair. I love these because they look like safety goggles. So lately I've been wearing these with my mask everywhere I go and I get lots of compliments on this too because it's just lightly tinted purple. That's loud. Loud stems though here. <laughs> but yeah, so it's like a very, very faint lavender kind of color if you if you look. See? Yeah, just checking the monitor to make sure it's on. Yeah. Anyway, I wear these on top of my mask, which is great because these are a little big. Like they're a little long back here and they're a little big up here. So when I have my mask on, it like perfectly props them up to sit like right here on me. So I, I have like safety goggles now, which are super cute and will be perfect for my new job. Uh, Cause I don't remember actually if I told you or not, I got a new job. I'm going to be working at a dispensary soon and I'm very excited. I've always wanted to work at a dispensary for the last few years, ever since I really started developing um, an interest in cannabis and like the benefits that it's given me as well as other people. Uh, and I really want to be an educator. Like I just, I really want to be able to help people see that the stigma against cannabis is just not, is not where it's at. Like that's not what it needs to be. It needs to not be considered a narcotic because it's just, it's just not. I understand it makes people loopy. It can make you unable to drive. It can make you feel like you can't do much, but that depends on the strain that you've had, how strong it is, who made it for you, and who you were with at the time when you partook, okay? It's the same with edibles. How big of a piece did you have? Did you know what kind of dose you were taking, or did someone hand it to you? Was it a homemade thing, or did you buy it from a dispensary? You know, it's like, it's everything varies, so. You gotta be like real particular about the way you handle your cannabis and who you do that with. So, and if it freaked you out the last time, then don't do it. You know, it's not like you need to, you have to love it. I'm just saying like, I don't think it needs to be considered the same as heroin because it's freaking not. <laughs> like at all. My biological parents were meth addicts until like my, my dad was like an addict until the day he died and my mother was an alcoholic until the day she died. <laughs> And I have been partaking in cannabis for the last like five years to help me sleep, to help my mood swings, to help my anxiety, to curb my depression, to make me hungry, to make me stop starving myself, to make me treat myself better. Like cannabis has changed my entire view of myself. And I don't blame that completely on the drug. I think with the combination of this incredible plant and really good trauma therapy, I've been able to blend them perfectly it's great with all of my medications and it doesn't mess up my system. So I'm really thankful for that. Uh, that is not the case for everybody and I don't claim to think that at all. So don't think that for a second that I would be like that person. I'm not. Um, but I just want you to know that there's possibilities to try again if you've only tried it a couple times or once and there's possibilities that it's maybe it's not for you way. I'm not going to be upset with you if you don't like it or smoke it or take it. And I hope that you won't be upset with me that I do because it really helps me. <laughs> and it helps me to actually be able to make content for you. So without it, I definitely would not be in front of this camera. I'm just going to tell you that. I love to entertain, but never in a million years did I think the internet was going to like me. And 
that's that on that, baby birds. I hope that you enjoyed seeing all of my different fun sunglasses. And um, just, you know, keep coming back. Stick around for the new background that I promise is coming soon. I just can't guarantee it'll be here by next week. And I'm also, this next weekend, I'm going to be working on soundproofing my area because it's like, you know how it gets sometimes. You just, you wake up and you're like, oh girl, today I don't feel like doing anything. And so I'm not going to do anything. <laughs> um, but just know that I love you. And you might say to that, mama bird, you don't even know. truth is, if people can choose to hate others just because they want to, then I can surely choose to love you just because I want to. Okay? So, I hope that you have a good rest. Or maybe if you're studying, I hope that you nail that test and you get it. And you get it because you're so freaking smart. I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you. Shh. I'm so proud of you. I don't even have an education. Like, I do. I went through high school and I became an esthetician. But, like, if you're in college right now, I just... My heart is with you. I hope that you stay healthy. Stay safe. Don't party. Don't party. And, um, I'll see you next week. Okay? <laughs>